What's up guys, you Doomsay here. Today we're back again, in this video we're going to be playing some Olaf in the jungle. So I thought I'd give Olaf a shot, I haven't played Olaf in a while, but in this match, I actually thought Olaf did really well into some of the picks in their draft, such as Amumu and Lux, so I thought he would be a good pick in this situation. But to start off the match, I accidentally started off with Boots actually, I was messing with the build order. And I was just trying out going for enchantment first and stuff, so I accidentally auto buy the Boots, but... You definitely want to start off with attack damage at the beginning because that'll definitely help with your jungle clear. Buying boots first will not help you clear your jungle faster, so... Getting the attack damage is definitely the move. I just accidentally bought the boots in this match. It's not a huge deal though because Olaf does have pretty solid jungle clear, so... It's not a huge deal. But in this match, we're going to be jungling up against an Amumu. And thinking about an Amumu, what are Amumu's strengths and weaknesses? Amumu's early game is super weak because jungle clear speed is super slow but then he scales super well into the late game. So really, I'm kind of looking to abuse the fact that Amumu has a super weak early game. And right now, I actually decided to just do a one-sided jungle clear because what doing a one-sided jungle clear does is it allows you to, it gives you more options as to what you want to do because you spend less time clearing your jungle. So by doing a one-sided jungle clear, I can look to go for both scuttles. I can look to invade. I can look to gank faster before Amumu. So that's really the goal right now, but notice a really important thing over here. I used the sweeping lens thing to scout out wards that were on the river back when I was at the over there. So as you can see, the ward on the river has now been revealed. And that's really important in my opinion when you are doing a jungle clear to definitely make use of those wards. But now notice what I'm doing. I'm leading the scuttle away from the ward. Now the scuttle can't even see, or now the ward can't even see where I am. Because if you didn't know, the scuttle always runs away from you. So as you can see from my positioning, I made the scuttle run all the way to the bot side. So now that ward hasn't even spotted me yet. So right now, I know Amumu cleared his red side jungle only, and he's doing that top scuttle, so I decided to go for this blue buff instead. So I'm taking this right now, but when you do go for an invade like this, you have to be super careful as to where the enemy mid lane is and where the enemy bot lane is in this case, because they can both rotate on you. So if you're here now, that's warded over there, so I back off. But notice what I do here when I cut through mid. I don't reveal myself on the map again. Notice they can't even really see me on the map. The auction doesn't know where I am. And I'm able to sneak behind here, and notice what this does now. Look, the auction didn't even know I'm here, and now I'm able to get right onto this auction. We land a really good charm and pick up the kill just because of that. And that's a mistake I think a lot of junglers do. And over here, I do think that they're going for the invade over here, so I ping it. I sadly was not able to get there in time, but I reached level 5 first because I got an assist. And now I'm able to pick up the Amumu. So that was really good on my part, and... That was a big mistake that the Mumu made. He tried to make he tried to do the same thing that I did where I invaded the blue buff, but you really have to pay attention to the side laners and the mid laner and what their strengths and weaknesses are. So if you're looking at my side, the reason why I was so comfortable going for that blue invade is because my bot lane is a Fiora, and Fiora is super aggressive early. They're super strong. They were gonna have the advantage in lane. And plus the mid lane is Ari. Ari is such a good roamer because landing that charm on a roam and a small skirmish will almost guarantee you that kill as we saw on the auction there. So that's why I know if I do go for that blue invade and they do roam on me and a fight breaks out, my team will most likely win that. But the Mumu on the other hand, they tried to mirror what I did and really force it. And I think that's a mistake a lot of junglers make and I have made this mistake too myself and I've kind of learned the hard way, but losing a blue buff in a case like this, it's not the end of the world. You can play so much smarter and just play like from 150 gold behind. It's really not a huge deal compared to instead trying to force something when you don't need to, like how that Amumu did, and then dying and giving up an even bigger gold lead now. So now I'm just clearing my red side again. I saw Amumu was on the top side of the map, and now I'm looking to set up for these objectives, taking the scuttle on this side, but... Notice what I'm doing here, actually. I'm looking to play towards this. I want to go for this Herald over here really quickly because I know that Amumu's on top side. Plus, we have the advantage in all three, all, both of these lanes over here, both the mid lane and my bot side. Both can help me clear this. So I decided to just go for this, and our top lane really entered this because they knew the Amumu was there. He had been on the map for a while, but they still overextended and got caught out. So... They did screw that over a bit, but now I'm dropping the Herald, and the reason for that is I know that they're starting up the Dragon, okay? They know I was on the Herald, so they're starting up the Dragon, and by placing that Herald there, if a fight breaks out here, then that Herald's just going to be able to go ham on that mid-turret over there. So that's what's happening over here. I'm getting onto their backline. I'm able to flash. I'm able to ult out the Lux route, 
pick up a kill. Another super low over here. Let's see. Can we get him over here? Oh, the Aurelian's a good charm, but Auction still had Barrier up. Sadly, I can't do anything, and this is the weakness of Olaf. It's that you don't really have the most amount of gap closing. You don't have a big dash. You don't have anything like that. And that's what makes Olaf a little bit tricky to play, is it makes it harder to gank and things like that. So that's something to really pay attention to on Olaf, is don't force the ganks if they aren't there, because a lot of times you won't be able to do anything because you just can't get onto them. And that's okay. Really, some of your strengths comes in, for example, that dragon fight right there. And skirmishes like that, you can do so much damage just because you have really good AoE, you have good sustain, plus with your ultimate, you can actually have pretty good gap closing. So over there, as we saw, when I dropped that Herald there, it got that entire mid turret plus half of the second tier turret. And that's huge because that opens up the map so much. Now they can't retreat to that first turret as easily. So I'm looking at the lanes. I see they're pretty overextended over there and starting to head up there. And notice who I target here. And this is really key. And this is why I think playing jungle is a bit harder than other roles is because I go straight onto the Lux, not onto the, Tr not onto the Tristana. And that's for one specific reason. I know that Lux does not have much mobility. Because as I was just saying earlier, Olaf's struggle, it comes with his lack of mobility. He doesn't have the best gap closing. He can't really chase down people as easily as other champs can. So if you're now, they're going in super deep. I don't know <laughs> why they're going in that far, but they kind of into that a bit. I'm getting some regen from the blue buff, so I start to come back a bit. And you can actually regen off minions with your second ability. It gives you so much lifesteal. So actually, if you use your second ability and just go to a minion wave or a monster or something, you'll regen up quite a bit. But as I was saying, notice how I targeted the Lux there. And the reason for that is I know Lux is an immobile target that I will be able to stick onto. Whereas the Tristana, they're just going to jump back to their turret with their leap ability. And that's things to consider when you are going for plays with Olaf is what is the enemy champs going to do? What can they do to escape? So for example, this auction, they have the like hook thing where they could like hook away if they need to. So those are just things that you really have to consider when targeting. And we're going to see that throughout the entire match, like how important targeting is on certain champs. So now I'm rotating down here. I see that this Jax is getting a bit anxious for this Fiora. He flashes over the wall. I just flash too. I'm able to pick up the kill, and now that's pretty good. So over here, I see the Amumu try and get onto me. Sadly, again, I'm not able to get onto him, and again, it's because I don't have big gap closers. I can't escape. I can't dive in too easily. So my team's trying to get there. The auction shows up, and watch this charm over here by Ari. That Chari arm was that Ari charm was so so nice. But now the Pantheon comes in and tanks the turret for me, which is very, very helpful. Juggling turret aggro is also really crucial in plays like this. Knowing when you should be the one tanking and when you need to let other people tank is really, really vital. So in that case, of course, the Pantheon was full health. He should have been the one to tank, and it was good that he did. That allowed me to get the kill without dying there, but now the Jack showed up, so we're not able to get the turret, sadly. Starting to reset. But one thing that people underestimate about Olaf is how easily he can turn around on people. And the reason for that is one, his perk is the lower health he is, the more attack speed he has, I believe. So he does more damage when he's lower at health. Plus, when you have all your abilities off cooldown, your second ability plus your third ability, if you use them both at the same time and then get in some autos, you regen so much health and people really don't realize how easily Olaf can turn onto you. Just because an Olaf is like two shots away doesn't mean that you're going to be able to kill him. Just keep that in mind, and I'm sure if you go up against Olafs, you will experience this the hard way, as everybody has. But now we're starting to set up for this next track, and I get pretty low, but I did a whole bunch of damage. So now I'm backing off, I'm taking the scuttle, and I'm really waiting for my second ability to get back off cooldown, because my second ability will just heal me up so much, and I can easily go back into the fight after I use it. So now I'm almost full health again. Like, notice how I was almost dead to almost full health now? So now I'm looking for this auction. I see he's really low, and actually I have my enchantment up. I have my glorious boots up. So I start to go onto this auction, and oh, both of these people come back. That is very unfortunate. I actually didn't realize it, but auction had revived both of these champs over here, both the Amumu and the Tristana. I'm not sure who it was. I think the Pantheon killed both the Tristana and the Amumu, and then the auction killed him. So they both revived, and they were both coming back, and I really did not notice that. So that was very unfortunate there.
but the build I'm maybe going for, it's going to be a Trinity Force into the Glorious Enchantment Boots into Death Stance and Guardian Angel and Steric Gauge, and then whatever defense item I need is what I'm going to build last. So really, those are the core items, and you can change up the order a bit. I've seen so many variations of it, but those are the main items that I think are the best on Olaf. And then for the runes, I actually went for a bit of an abnormal runes. I've been messing around with the runes a lot lately, and I'll talk about them in a sec. Right now over here, I see that they're around the area, and I'm keeping an eye on this, and using your ultimate at the right time is so, so crucial. So wasting valuable seconds of your ult can really screw you over. Instead, you really don't want to ult unless you need to, in my opinion, because I think that's a mistake a lot of people do, is since the biggest part of it is that avoid CC, but actually notice what I did there, and that was really, really key what I did there to escape there. And I'm going to talk about that for a sec really quick. Um, so if you didn't know, the Jax, well, of course you knew because you were just watching. I don't know why I said that, but um, the Jax was chasing me down. I got pretty low. I picked up the Lux, but then the Jax was coming on to me. So one of Jax's abilities is, is that he can leap to an enemy champ or an ally champ if he wants or a unit or whatever. And that's pretty much his gap closure. He could jump right on top of you. So notice what I did there. I waited for Jax to use that ability before I flashed away. Imagine if I had flashed away and then when Jax still had that ability up and then Jax just jumped right back onto me, then that's completely useless because he literally just gets right back on top of me. So that's why I waited for him to use his jump first before I flashed away. So now I got to kind of back up. They have really good positioning. My team has kind of been inting this entire match. They've been going in pretty deep. So for now, that Tristana gets a super good jump over the wall. And again, that's the weakness of Olaf, is it's hard for you to get onto these mobile champs such as Tristana um, that have good mobility. And actually, I think Tristana is a really good pick into Olaf just because you can easily escape a lot of this stuff. I actually picked Olaf kind of early in this draft. I picked him into the Lux and the Jax and the Amumu. And then the Tristana was picked up later, which is a bit unfortunate. But... My team, they're struggling in this match. Overall, I don't know what that Fiora's build is too. Don't go the Fiora build. That is an awful Fiora build. <laughs> Please don't do that. But um, the runes that I was talking about. I've been messing around with the runes a bit, but for this match, actually what I went is I went Conquer into Brutal. And then for third rune, I went Conditioning. I think Conditioning is a very good rune in jungle. And I think it's very underestimated, unless you're looking to play super aggressive early and you want to take bone plating, where you take reduced damage for the first few attacks. I do think conditioning is probably like the best rune for that slot. I do think Hunter Titan is decent in certain cases, but I honestly think people overrate it a bit. And then for the last rune, I've been going Pathfinder a lot. I think the mobility has been super useful to just being able to roam early, clear your jungle faster, get off ganks easier, and just move around the map. I think it's made a huge deal. But you definitely can go Mastermind. On certain champs, I definitely do recommend Mastermind. So that's the runes, but going back to this match, really, at this stage of the game, my key part is to try and set up for my teammates and try and assassinate immobile targets. That's really the goal, is I want to figure out what champs have low, mo mo low mobility and which ones can I stick onto, and right now, I'm really avoiding this Jax. And the reason for that is when Jax uses his counter like that, he actually blocks off all your damage. So that's why he does really well into Olaf, actually. But notice what I do here, actually. I don't just completely reset out the fight. I just go to these minions, and I start to regen up a bit. And now I'm almost full health again, and now I can head back into this fight. So now I'm looking for this Lux. I see this Lux is isolated and by themselves, so I start to go on to him. Able to pick up the kill, flash out. And now I'm able to get out of there. Now, notice what I do here. I can go for the seal if I want for the dragon. I easily could, but do I? No, I do not. And I think this is a huge play here, and I think it's a really good play. And if you can figure out why, that's super good. But the reason is because Baron Nasher is up. If I die at this stage of the game, and then they can get Baron for free pretty much because I'm not up to contest. And without me, my team is not really doing too much damage, so I really need to stay alive just to just so they don't do Baron. Because if I die there going for that steal, there's a low percentage chance that I get that steal first of all, and then they get the Baron, then it's almost game over for sure. So 
that's really something to consider. And I think a lot of junglers need to consider that once that second to third dragon starts to roll around, is it worth going for the steal with that Baron there? If it's like the first dragon and Baron isn't there or anything and they can't get anything out of it, then okay, maybe you can go for the steal if you're feeling it. But if with that Baron up, I definitely don't think it's a move. So if we now actually go for a Frozen Heart for my last defensive item, the reason for that is the Jack's attack speed, the auction plus the Tristana I really, really wanted, Frozen Heart. I think, I don't even know if I built Sterix this match, actually. I might have actually skipped over Sterix. Normally, I would build Sterix, but I think this match, I was actually looking to go Frozen Heart into um, Randuin's, just because they had so much attack damage and so much attack speed and crit. But again, notice what I'm doing here. I'm really just focusing down the immobile targets. And look at how easy it is for me to get onto them. Because without them being able to stun me up, root me up, I can easily pick up those kills. So for now, my Fiora is going in. They got a bit of damage. They have to dip now. Making sure not to die to this auction ult. And I don't know what that Ari is up to. That Ari is on something. <laughs> but... Oh, sorry for the inconsistency lately with uploads. I just have been super busy lately with, um, if you don't know, I actually just started up university, so it's been kind of a big adjustment, and I've been trying to figure out scheduling and stuff, and it's just very different. So I've been trying my best, but hopefully I can get to a more consistent schedule soon, and I'm trying to work on it, but, like, I have not been able to play much lately, sadly, but we're doing the best that we can. And this was the match that I got in, so I thought I'd upload it. So we're able to pick up four kills there, which is really good. They overextended there way too much, but that's good. So at this stage of the game, honestly, as an Olaf, you are going to start to fall off a bit, and it's going to turn more towards your ADCs and your mages and mid lane to pick it up and deal majority of the damage. So by this stage of the game, your ADC and Misfortune, your mid lane Ari should be able to do most of the work, but sometimes that doesn't happen. And I do think that's another struggle that Olaf has sometimes is once it gets to super late game team fights, the mechanics that you have to have on Olaf to play them in super late game team fights are super specific just because you have to be aware of anything that can stun you up, root you up, push you back along those lines. And you have to time your ult perfectly or else you can get screwed over. Because for example, let's say that at ult, I jump onto the Tristana, okay? I get onto the Tristana, the Tristana jumps away themselves with their leap ability, my ult runs out and then Tristana just ults me and I get knocked back then you're pretty much useless in that fight and you've done nothing and you're just going to die. And that's what makes playing Olaf in the late game tricky. And notice what I'm doing. I'm literally just abusing the fact that this Lux has no mobility at all. And I'm just going straight onto him every single time. And there's literally nothing they could do because they can't stun me up or anything in this time and I can easily get this Lux. So I get that and now I just flash back out. I'm literally just picking off this Lux over and over. I can't really do that to any of the other champs in this match just because they have more mobility or like the Jax has his counter so I can't really kill him as easily. But if there were other champs such as Jin, uh, or what are some other champs that are less mobile? Teemo, you probably could. You could run him down with the Glorious Enchantment Boots. You could easily just run those down. And Mumu's too tanky at this point to really look to assassinate. So now this Elder Dragon is spawning and we are setting up around it. I'm looking to push this wave over here. Oh, there's actually... Oh, I forgot to talk about something. But there's a stage earlier. I think it was the third dragon, actually, where my ADC recalled full health right when the dragon was spawning. Please do not do that because you give up so much positioning advantage and that stasis saved him so much there. And the reason why I felt like I could go onto the Tristana there, actually, was because I saw that the Tristana used their leap ability and without their leap, actually, then I can get onto the Tristana... Then I can get onto the... Tr Oh my gosh, this is a tongue twister. Then I can get onto the Tristana, because then the Tristana does not have as much mobility. <laughs> so now I'm looking at this Elder, and I'm really thinking, do I go for the Steel or not? And I honestly decide not to, and again, it's because of that Baron. I honestly think if we get the Baron at this stage of the game, I think we can win, even though we're falling behind. So that's actually why I want to stay alive, is I still think getting that Baron can win us the game. Because they only have like one and a half turrets left in mid lane. And I think we can easily get that with Baron and we can get so many inhibs with whoever gets the next Baron. So that's why I'm really just playing safe and I do not want to die here. So if we're the Pantheon ult in, that was kind of a bad ult. But I'm keeping an eye on this Baron. 
I know that they're probably setting up around us, so that's why I'm stepping up a bit here, is I don't want to give them that Baron for free, since I do believe if they get the Baron, they're going to win this match. But now I'm going on to this Jax, and I'm not full-on committing, and again, the reason why I'm not full-on committing is because, again, he has his counter, so I can't just completely burst him down. The Luxult gets me, and again, Jax just got super fed in this match. My team really did not do what they were supposed to do in the late game, sadly. Most of our teammates didn't do too much. The Ari had a good early and mid game, but then they kind of fell off in the late game with their decision making and positioning with her ult. But um, this match actually ended up being a loss. And I know some of you all said that you want to see sweatier and closer matches, so this is definitely one of them. But I 100% think it was winnable, and that's why I wanted to show it. Is just I think if we could have just stayed alive and gotten one good team fight off and won, we could have gotten that Baron and easily ended the match. But anyways, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it, even though it's a loss.